Hi team, I hope you're all well. As you can see from the title of this video, I am attempting to do like a, a reading, an Adi LaRue reading diary. I don't know even know what you would call this. A reading vlog for reading The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue. Now, when I started this video, I did not realise I was going to do this as a separate reading vlog. So, I was reading this part way through a week and um, the first clip that you'll see after this one is me 40% into the book just part way through a random reading vlog. So, I haven't got an introduction into this video. So, this is me post Adi LaRue doing my introduction for this video. I would have, I was just going to pretend that this was the beginning of the video, but it's pointless even doing that, isn't it? So, on the basis, it is after release day and I have a copy of the book now. The first clip is me reading the e-arc that I have. So, I did get an e-arc of this, so thank you so much to the publishers Titan Books and to NetGalley for providing me with a copy and e-arc of the book. Uh, really appreciate it. However, I, it did get to a point where I had to put the e-arc down. So, I was reading this before release day. I had to put the e-arc down and wait for the physical book to come out so that I could finish it off, which I then did um for the rest of tuesday on release day tuesday the 6th of october so first clip was from like a few weeks ago quite a few weeks ago and the f subsequent clips including this one are from post release day the reasons why i had to stop reading were that i struggle with migraines and i came down with like a really really bad migraine which meant that i couldn't continue on reading with my kindle and it was causing headaches and things like that reading too much because this book is 560 pages long. well actually this copy is 500 and that the story itself 541 pages long but overall this book is 560 pages so it is chunky and i was struggling at being on my kindle and having so much screen time trying to read this so i had to wait until i made the decision which was really difficult but i made the decision to wait until the book came out so this book is following adeline larue adeline adeline larue and uh, we're following her in two different timelines essentially so we're following her in 1698 and that carries on and then we're following her in 2014 as well all will be explained if you are, don't already know the storyline to this the synopsis to the storyline and we alternate chapters between present and past so in the past, we're following her to start off with in 1698, and then we jump a few years until eventually we get, she's 23 years old, I think, and her parents are ready to marry her off to this man whose wife very recently died during childbirth. So he's got, I think, three or four kids, and um, he obviously needs a mum for his kids, and uh, he's gonna marry Addie, because she's not married. And um, at this point, she's she's deemed a bit of like a geriatric because she's 23 years old and she's not married. And this is the 1700s, early 1700s. So she decides to try and make a wish to the gods. And it's apparently she's been told by a friend of hers, Estelle, I think she's called, that you pray to the gods in the day, don't pray to the nighttime gods because they are a different type of god. However, Addy ends up not fallen asleep whilst praying but pretty much fallen asleep whilst praying on her wedding day and it goes from daytime to nighttime she hasn't realized and the god that comes to help her is the devil so she prays to the god and asks him can he help her get out of this situation she doesn't want to belong to anybody she wants to live for longer because Adeline wants to go and see the world and she wants to experience things before she settles down and things like that. So she wants more time, but she doesn't want to belong to anybody. So the devil grants her her wish. She hasn't asked for a specific amount of time and she ends up becoming immortal. Now, the problem with Addie's situ situation that she realizes very, very quickly in this situation is that nobody can remember her. If a door is shut behind her, they don't remember her. It can, in a split second, everything can change and nobody remembers her they can go to sleep and in the morning not remember who she is and when she goes back to her parents house they think she's a crazy woman because she's claiming that she's their daughter but they've not had kids so 
she they think she's a crazy woman and it basically follows Addy through this time period of realizing what exactly she's just done and having to come to terms with this and having to deal with all of the repercussions of this and then also following her, her in 2014 like 300 years later coming up 300 years later and how she's managed to continue on with life and get on with things and then meeting a guy who ends up remembering her going through this whole process and I was let me try and talk about this book as if this is the intro I, I in all honesty before I requested the e-arc I didn't know anything about this book nothing about it I read the synopsis and I was like oh that sounds really really interesting so I requested it not expecting to get a copy of it because I know a lot of people had been let down by the publishers not being able to get it on NetGalley and then I got accepted and I was like oh okay here we are holy shit and I was stoked about it really really excited and because of everybody else was excited I was starting to get pumped but I did go into this without too many high expectations on the basis that I've not read from Victoria Schwab before. I've, well, not V.E. Schwab. I've read Victoria's Middle Grade series, which is the Ghosts, uh, City of Ghosts series. I have read that, but that was it. I had never, I've never read from V.E. Schwab before. I am now currently in halfway through Vicious. So um, just to let you know of that, I am picking up more from her now. But before picking this up, I had, hadn't read anything from her that wasn't middle grade. So I was unsure on how I was going to do with this. So I went into this with mild expectations on the basis that I didn't want to go in too high because I didn't want to ruin it for myself. But I didn't want to go in too low and then again, ruin it for myself. So I just went in with mild expectations and the rest of this video will show you what I thought of this book. Um, expect tears. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. I will, yeah, I hope you enjoy. I, this book, I'm 40% through Addy LaRue, and this book gives you a lot to think about. It's as you're going through the book and you realise the impact of being, essentially being invisible, what impact this has on Addy's life. So as I was going, as I was getting further and further into the book, I just sat there and I thought, why didn't Addy just get a fucking job? Like, why has she not got a place? Why didn't she just get a job? And I know that people forget about her as soon as she's left, but then it was only <laughs> after a little bit that that actual statement really fucking hit me. She can't get a job because every time she leaves work, the second she leaves an interview, she will be for forgotten about. If she managed to get past the fucking interview and get the job, the second she leaves work on the first day, she will be forgotten about. So she cannot physically have a job. Um, because she's no money, therefore, she cannot get a place. But even if she got a place, if she was renting it off somebody, because she's in New York City, so she's not likely to buy something, if she's renting it off somebody, they're going to forget. The second she makes a deal, they're going to forget. She can't even sign the deal, so the idea is that no marks of Addy are left behind. So she can't even write something down. So she's in the cinema at the moment and she's never been able to this is like a really really i think it's like an indie cinema or something and in between the seats there's like a table and there is a menu and you can write your order down and uh someone will go and get the order and bring it back to you but because she's never been able to write an order down she's never been able to order anything because the second the person leaves the room they'll forget about her so just the simplest thing like even signing a lease for a flat she cannot do it and it's only as you get further into the book that these repercussions really fucking hit you and you're like good lord this woman she literally means nothing to the world and it's absolutely shocking and the further I get into it, the more that's hitting me. And I just couldn't imagine living my life like that. Part of me started off thinking, oh, this would be really cool. Like, imagine being able to go into a shop, try some clothes and then just walk out with them on because they forgot you were even in there and they didn't realise what you, they don't know what you were wearing when you walked in. So you walk out with the clothes that you've tried on in the shop. Um, 
and imagine not having to have any responsibilities and things like that but i just would fucking hate the thought of meeting people every single day and me remembering them but them having no idea who i am and never making any emotional connections well you make emotional connections but nobody not one person has an emotional connection to you because they don't remember you it would be fucking awful this book really really makes you think I'm absolutely loving it. I, I am gutted, really, really gutted that I don't have like a, not in a spiteful way by any means, that I don't have a physical copy of this book at the moment while I'm reading it because um, I really, 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 I've never wanted to write in a book as much in my life. Like I really, really want to annotate this book to death. I just think it's incredible. I just think it's really, really amazing and can't wait to get my hands on a copy there is a high possibility i might buy two of these just so that i can write in one of them <laughs> um i love this book it's so good there is a a high possibility I don't really want to say it i don't want to jinx it but there's a high possibility this might become number one for the year for me <laughs> not just in general uh i love this fucking book the writing is amazing it makes me so excited to pick up more from ve schwab i know her other stories are different to this but i'm so fucking excited to pick up more from her i love her writing style i love addy i just I've got chills thinking about her. My heart breaks for it, really, really does. I just cannot believe that she's lived 300 years of this. Like, it's incredible. I'm at the point now where the person, there's a person that's remembered her. And um, it's really sweet. But even that is not a simple gesture because she, if he introduces her to anyone, he's going to have to keep doing it over and over. And he probably won't understand why she's not told him. Um just simple things like i don't know it's just crazy and obviously she's no money so it's difficult when they go out she's um i don't know this book it just does strange things to your brain like i will be reading the book and all of a sudden i'll be like oh my god and i'll just go back to something that was that was a few chapters ago that you know she's not got a job or anything she's not got an apartment and in my head i was like she's just fucking lazy and then i was like as i was part way through reading this like carrying on reading some more i was like no she's fucking not she can't it's physically impossible for her to do these things she can't hold down a job because nobody remembers her and she cannot get an apartment because or a house because she can't physically sign a lease she's not got the money to get something and the people that own the apartment would forget <laughs> that she's there it's just wild absolutely wild it's amazing i love this book so much so good anyway i'm gonna carry on reading <laughs> oh, fucking love it Hi team, I can't remember the last time I updated you or what I last said to you, but it's been a period of time now. We're currently on the 6th of October and today is publication day for the one and only The Invisible Life of Adela Rue. This is beautiful. This is the Waterstones edition. It's got gold sprayed edges and it's signed. These end papers are gorgeous and also underneath here there is a foiling decal thing as well it's so beautiful but this is if anybody owns a hardcover v schwa book this is very um small it's a small hardback as opposed to a normal large hardback so that's why it's 560 pages i have ordered the american version as well off of um book depository but i will be getting that it'll be a while now i probably come next week while i'm on holiday so um that one i think is a taller version you know like a normal hardback because it's like 456 pages or something um so i think that's like a normal taller version whereas this is like a short version but i'm so excited i've just had a quick look now to find out where i'm up to in here i've gone back a chapter because i couldn't find 
my place I, apparently i stopped halfway through a chapter which is annoying so i'm currently up to part 13 but well, chapter 13 and i'm on page page i'm on page 243 so there are 500 and how many pages did i say 541 pages and i'm on page 243 198 pages so we're i'm about to sit down and smash this out now because i'm going to carry on with this and finish this book off today fingers crossed it is currently um 25 to 3 in the afternoon so i'm hoping to finish this tonight i think that's do it's fucking well doable to be fair like so doable so far i am absolutely loving this i think this is going to rip my heart out i know i was buddy reading this with cody so she's finished it she gave it five stars she absolutely loved it i've no doubt she'll do her own review but um yeah i am so excited to read this so we're going to do this let's go i have siobhan's currently running some reading sprints it's now october so supernatural thon is running and siobhan's currently running some reading sprints on there so i'm going to take advantage of that and get this done let's go okay i haven't gotten that much further on yes this is my sister's pregnancy pillow <laughs> one off she gave me one it's very comfortable all right um i haven't gotten that much further to be honest from where i was a second ago i was like 241 pages i'm now 251 i'm on to the next chapter but that chapter addy ended up going to these are not i'm hoping that these aren't too spoilery they're just like brief it's essentially me coming to the realization of how difficult and how bad this entire situation is for addy about the fact that nobody remembers her so she's gone to um a dinner party essentially kind of semi not by accident but she wasn't intending to go which she's ended up going I'm not going to explain why because that is a spoiler but she's gone to a dinner party and I hadn't realized how even terrifying that would be because you have the situation where yes once you're inside that's fine and it, like if it's an open plan place that's great but what if somebody goes to the toilet because the second the door shuts behind them they'll not remember who she is and then they might come out the bathroom freaking out and I hadn't realized just even that is so, such a fucking simple thing you had going to a dinner party and somebody might forget you when they go to the toilet a terrifying slowly but surely this book gets into your bones and into your mind and you just sit there and you just don't realize how much it would I said to, when before i started reading this book i was like oh that would be really like semi cool imagine nobody remembering you remembering you but then i was like as i've been reading the book more and more i realized how terrifying that fact actually is that nobody would remember who you are you don't belong to anybody and nobody remembers you ever never ever remembers you you'll be so lonely it's a terrifying thought okay it's me again i'm just about ready to cry um i only got like another page into the book from when I just spoke to you a second ago but we're now obviously getting an insight into Henry and what's going on with his life and there is like a whole paragraph here that has just really really fucking hit me um talking about time moving so fast and um blink and you're halfway through school paralyzed by the the idea that whatever you choose to do it means choosing not to do a hundred other things and it's really just fucking hit me another part of it is that um blink and you're 26 and you're called into the dean's office because he can tell your heart's not in it anymore and he advises you to find another path and he assures you that you'll find a calling but that's the whole problem you've never felt called to any one thing there is no violent push in one direction but a softer nudge a hundred different ways and now all of them feel out of reach And I just, that's really fucking hit me because I'm currently going through the process of changing my career path. So, um, and I've really fucking felt that in my soul, Jesus Christ. This book is going to kill me. <laughs> 
Hello, okay, so it's a little later on. I haven't got any great deal further more with Addy, but I am further on. Um, it's now 10 to 8. I don't know if I'm going to get this done, guys. I think I can do, as long as I focus on it, but I'm distracted. Um, 360 pages in, I'm up to par 5. I fucking hell i love this book the thing is i kind of wish i could take my time with it but and i could do but i kind of just want to get through it because i feel like i've been reading this forever and i just want to get to the end know how it ends and then the next time that i do a read the next time i read it when i do a reread which i think will be very soon i'll probably pick it up again in november i can take my time with it and just really savor it and take it in and i'll probably see a million new different things i feel like this is one of those books that you will get something different out of it every time you read it and i can't really tell you too much about the second half of this book on the basis that it surrounds henry and what's going on with him and i don't want to spoil it for people because none of what's going on with henry is mentioned in the synopsis so i don't this is to be a spoiler free review so i don't really want to spoil that but it's very very good and it really adds a twist to the story and i don't know how this is going to end i have an inclination now because of how part four just ended but yeah just checking i was on the right part but i don't know fully how this is going to end i've got no idea i couldn't predict it but I'm so excited. I fucking love this book. There is a high possibility, I don't know if I've mentioned this previously, but there's a high possibility this could be my new favourite book of the year. I know I've only just found it in the Wiki King in September, but I think this might knock that off its podium. I love the writing style, I love the story, I love Addy and Henry. I even love the side characters like B and um muriel i think that's how you say her name i always get that wrong muriel um henry's sister and even robbie who's a bit of a dick but i even enjoy him as well there's just so much happening in this book so so much happening and it's the storyline itself is relatively simple it's the characters and the writing style and what the characters the decisions that they're making and things like that and even the fact that they are living with this reality that they have like Addie's living with the reality that she will never own a home she will never own a bank card she will never own a phone she will never have a friend she will never have family um she will never own properly own a piece of clothing that she's gone out and bought for herself she'll never have a job do you know what i mean like this woman is a nobody she is an actual nobody that walks around within us all the time and has done for the last 300 years but she is a nobody nobody remembers her and it's terrifying it's such a terrifying thought and it must be so isolating and then henry has his own shit going on which is to be fair probably like equally lonely and equally terrifying i just the 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 things that are going on with these two characters are so very different but have very very similar vibes with them and will have very similar feelings the characters are projecting very similar feelings and i just think it's so clever the way that v schwab has done this she's just done such an amazing job and she's just gonna do this book is gonna do amazing things i think i just can't believe i can believe this is 10 years in the making to be fair um 100 v schwab has put her heart and soul into this book that's my microwave my apologies v schwab has put her heart and soul into this book and you can see it it's on every single page in every single word and it's just beautiful and i cannot wait to carry it on and finish it off i don't know how this video is gonna go um 
I've never done a book diary sort of thing before where I've just reviewed a book, done a vlog for one book, but I'm hoping that it works out okay. Also, I realise I've just come back on here and not even explained why I got so upset before <laughs> with that um, thing. Basically, I am changing, I'm currently in the process of changing my career path, so I am literally going from construction into um, counselling, so like mental health side of things and it's a massive it's a huge change for me and I'm very very excited um it's something that's very new I only got the course over the weekend and my course pack is coming to me tomorrow and I'm really hyped about it tomorrow being Wednesday the 7th of October and I'm really excited about it but I just it really hit home for me. I have always felt like I don't really know where I belong as far as my career is concerned. I've never really known what I want to do properly. I have never been, when I was a kid, there was never specific, if you asked me what I wanted to be when I'm older, I would never have a specific answer for you. I didn't know. Even at 16, I had no fucking idea what I wanted to be. And as I've grown up throughout the years, throughout my 20s, I've wanted to be a mechanic. I've wanted to be a paramedic. I've just wanted to do some of the most, obs well not obscure, but probably obscure for me because I would never be a good paramedic. I can't, I pass out at injections. I would probably be a shit mechanic. I'm not great. I am not bad actually with my hands, but I like to have my nails done. Things like that. I'm probably, I don't know, just different things, but helping people has always been something I want to do and... I think going into counselling is something that will really, really work out well for me and it's definitely something that I've been thinking about doing actually for a few years, even before my diagnosis last year of mental health and I think it's going to work out really well for me and I think having those feelings of feeling like I don't belong anywhere to, like not that you belong to your career, but some people just have an idea at 16, they know exactly what they want to be, they go and do it and they fucking love it. Not, it doesn't happen to everybody, it probably doesn't happen to the majority of people, to be honest, they might find it later on in life like I'm doing now, but a lot of people love their job, a lot of people fucking hate their job, but they probably wish they were doing something else and they probably know what that is. I've never known, I've never really known, I've never, my hobbies and my passions have never been things that will pay, so I love watching movies and I could review movies as well, but I mean, I could be a movie critic, but I don't know what sort of qualifications you need to do that. I love reading books, but that's only come to me in the last like two years. Just, I've never really felt like I belong and it just, that chapter really fucking hit home. And I feel like, uh, myself and Henry have a lot in common so I'm just really vibing with his character and it's quite emo an emotional time reading from his perspective a little bit so yeah I'm having a great time with this book really loving it so I will update you again later when I carry on reading um, it might be tomorrow before I update you again with a wrap-up but my next clip will probably be a wrap-up it's pointless unless there's something really important to tell you part way through that's not a spoiler but yeah um loving it in bed and I'm also 100 and, no 100 457 pages in so I haven't got long to go so I've got less than 100 pages to go now but I've just hit the end of a chapter and I had a question when Henry and Addy go somewhere and someone leaves the room and comes back she has to reintroduce herself every time uh which is odd or the person just ignores the fact that everybody else around like uh, that they don't seem to know who she is but everyone else around the table does so they just seem to ignore it or if she leaves the room and comes back in she has to reintroduce herself my question is this that period of time that henry was in the room with her do the people around them remember the conversations they had with henry or does the whole period of that time that Addie was with him just go from their memory like, is it just Addie that's wiped from the memory or is it the whole period of time? I haven't figured it out yet. It's really weird. And it was just bothering me. 
so I had to ask the question. If anybody reading this has figured that out, let me know. But uh, I haven't figured that out yet and it was just a question that was bugging me. Right, I really want to try and finish this tonight. I don't think I'm gonna finish it before midnight. I'm gonna carry on. It's 1.43. And I've just finished I delivery. I've got my mouth guarded. Um, if I'm talking fully, that's why. I just finished I delivery. I finished about 10 minutes ago, but I was just getting ready for bed. And um, I spent the last 10 pages of this book crying. And I've just spent another 20 minutes crying. So um, I feel exhausted. This was incredible and I think it will do a lot of different things for for for, for different people um for me personally I related to Addie with some of the things that she was feeling but I related massively to Henry really really bit like really really related to him and how he was feeling Gonna have to sleep on this because I can't really, I feel like I can't put my thoughts into words on this book properly and I need to sleep on it and five stars, 100% five stars. I've not even put it through a pile, but it's definitely five stars. I fucking love this book. This did so, so much. Um, Incredible. I feel like I'm such a strong connection to this book and I did quite early on to read in the arc and I was so frustrated that I couldn't carry on reading it in that format it just I was really struggling with it but I'm so glad that I finished this today I'm really hoping that this vlog turns out okay because I would really like you guys to see my thoughts on this and my thought process but we'll see how it goes but I'm gonna go to sleep now I'm really really tired and I've got work in the morning and it's almost two o'clock so I'm gonna go to sleep and I will give you my full thoughts at some point tomorrow hopefully um, and get this vlog out for you guys as soon as possible fingers crossed but I'll see you in the morning hello team it's now Wednesday afternoon and I am a bit more coherent and able to give you my thoughts on the invisible life of Addie LaRue which is great I just got home from work so um well, you've spent this whole video seeing my thoughts, my thought process. This book was incredible. I've run it through Core Pile and it's come out at like a 9.8, which is like an extremely high five stars. So it's my favourite book of the year. I fucking loved it. It was incredible. I loved everything about this. I loved the writing style. I loved the characters. I loved the plot. It kept me going all the way through. I, there were a couple of times where my attention was starting to drop off, where a um, we might jump back to the past again and the story was starting again. I was like, why are we going through this story? But as you get through the chapter, the chapters in this are relatively short as well, but as you get through the chapter and go further through the chapter, you realise why this is pertinent to the story. So that did happen a couple of times where I was starting to drop off, but I think... That was probably actually more to do with the fact that I was exhausted than the actual book. Um, but I loved everything about this. I just thought it was so cleverly done. Addy, I, I honestly don't know how she does it. I don't know how she does it. She survived for 300 years with not a single person remembering who she is until she meets Henry. And I don't know how she continues to live. And she's mainly doing it to spite the devil that she traded her soul with <laughs> because the, the longer she lives for the later and later he's getting her soul and because he was a bastard with her to begin with she's just decided that well you know what i'm just gonna live to spite him and i just think that takes balls you know what i mean like the stubbornness and the persistence to do that to live 300 years just to spite another person so they can't have a part of you is incredible. And I just think it's so cleverly done. I think Henry's character is amazing as well. It adds another dynamic 
to the story and I just think it's so well done in the way that she's meshed these characters together and made them work is just incredible amazing I fucking loved it I don't know what else to tell you now because at this point I obviously don't want to give spoilers and at this point I think I've pretty much voiced every single thing I was thinking throughout reading this book so yeah I think that essentially wraps my review up of this book I don't know I hope that this video has been okay I don't know how this is gonna go I've never done one of these before I probably should have said that like three or four times in the last three or four clips but I hope that this has gone okay please let me know if you want me to do one of these again I was planning on doing one for Kingdom of the Wicked which comes out on the 27th of October and I was actually I'm actually planning for that to go out on the day that the book is released because I have a physical arc of it um it this tripped me up on the basis that I had an E arc and my migraines w w started kicking in again so I unfortunately my health meant I couldn't continue to pick the book up because of the formatting that's but it's okay because I've done it now um but I hope that this video is okay I hope you have enjoyed it um please let me know in the comments down below if there was anything that you think I missed out on by doing one of these I haven't watched a lot of these so I don't really know what's involved in doing one but let me know in the comments down below if you thought I missed anything out or if you thought I did something well or whatever and i hope you have enjoyed it fingers crossed leave me a star emoji if you got to the end of this please and um yeah i hopefully i will do another one of these in the future we will see but um yeah i will see you in my next video bye for now